thanks to Symbiosis for giving me the opportunity to be here for this session. I'm going to talk about epidemiological research and beyond, moving on to implementation research. So traditionally, that's the set of tools or epidemiological study designs that we work with. And it's called a an hierarchy because the ones higher up are supposed to lead us closer to the truth. The ones, the three blue at the bottom, that is the descriptive or cross-sectional studies, the case control study and the cohort study are together called the observational study designs. The other two on the top are the next level, which is either the intervention or experimental study designs. Traditionally, these set of tools are what, as practitioners, we start off with the ones at the bottom, and then once you start getting comfortable, you can then start proceeding to do the ones at the top. They give us an idea of the cause and effect or exposure and outcome or disease with greater clarity. And once these study designs are done, typically you get to know what's the disease burden. Then we'd get to know what's the determinants or the etiology of the various diseases. And typically what happens after once we have learned this, so this is for a like the equivalent in an individual is where you make the diagnosis and then you start the treatment or the management. For a community, this sort of helps us make a community diagnosis. And traditionally, once the community diagnosis is made, we normally go off into implementing or intervening with appropriate public health level interventions. And usually what happens is that is done without too much science behind it. The interventions are largely based on expertise, experience, and more recently, the implementation itself has become a sort of a science with research component built into it. And that is because once the implementation is done, we see that what is already known is actually doesn't benefit most people. So I have a slide here which shows, I've taken the example of a few conditions in obstetrics and pediatrics or maternal and child health, to show, if you look at the various bars that's across the continuum from conception till about a few years into childhood, both for the mother as well as for the child, you'll see that none of those bars are reaching up to the 100%. That means what is already known, whether it's anemia coverage, malnutrition treatments, all of these are known for the last four or five decades, but none of them have reached 100% coverage. That means 100% of mothers or 100% of children, newborns, don't get the benefit of what is already known. And therefore, these are what are called implementation gaps. That means we know what to do. Either the patients or the families are not able to reach health facilities, or the workers from the health facilities are not able to reach the families, or because of inefficiencies in diagnosing and management, due to various reasons or the ones which are outside the health sector like transport, economics. There are several reasons why none of the known treatments or interventions reach 100% coverage. And therefore, to take care of these implementation gaps, we say we may know what to do, but not always on a large scale. And therefore, there's this new field of how to work from beyond epidemiological research into implementation research, which is basically the scientific study of the processes used in the implementation of initiatives, but taking care of the context. So whether it's urban or rural or tribal or North India or South India or different states, or sometimes even within the same state across different regions of a state, context is very important. And typically what is done in implementation research are these three steps. First is to understand the barriers and facilitators to why known treatments are not reaching 100% coverage. And then to improve the implementation through various steps. I'll give an example of how we did that. And what is to be noted also is sometimes there's a mix of terminologies of operational research and implementation research. I try and differentiate between those two by saying it depends on who the users are. If the users are those who are working in health facilities, that's either health centers or hospitals, then it's preferable to use the word operational research. But if it's beyond health facilities and including communities, and the beneficiaries are program managers, then we use the word implementation research. So we took a problem 
of those who are from the obstetrics or neonatology and pediatrics will be familiar. There's a treatment called kangaroo mother care, which is basically holding on to the babies, skin to skin for prolonged periods, so that the babies who are born low birth weight, especially preterm low birth weight babies, maybe in entire set below 2,500 grams, but especially the ones who are less than 2,000 grams, benefit from this type of care. And as you can guess, the name we copied from kangaroos, which traditionally hold on to their joys, which are always born preterm. And of course, now it doesn't have to be kangaroo mother care. Any adult in the family can actually offer the care, kangaroo care. And what did we set out to do? For our project, we actually set out to say, we will improve kangaroo mother care coverage. It's so simple an intervention. We set a target of reaching greater than 80% coverage from the existing baseline coverage rate of less than 5% in one district in Karnataka. The research phase actually two phases. The first one is what is called formative research phase, where we say we want to learn what's the ground realities of why this is not happening. So we identified barriers and facilitators, identify who are the stakeholders we work with, and then co-design an implementation plan that is with the families as well as the healthcare providers. And then once we have learned that in the first year, go on to implement it in the second year in phases, because it was not possible to do across the entire district in, at the start itself. We started with a small set of the health facilities in one part of the taluk of the district. And we didn't start with both the public and the private sector initially. We started with the public sector and then moved on to the private sector. And we also had teams who were in charge of monitoring, making use of data, which is very important, and then built small quality improvement cycles and then an evaluation team. So that's the geography, one district in northern part of Karnataka called Koppal district where usually the health indicators are worse off than where we all work in, in Bangalore, which is in the southernmost district in Karnataka. And within the district, I show the map with four different sub-districts. The total population is a little over 15 lakhs in this district in 2016. Annually, we anticipated that there will be about 25,000 live births and spread over 90 health facilities. 50 of government facilities and 40 private facilities. After the understanding the scale of the work, the first part was to try and figure out traditionally who gets missed out. So we guessed that not all babies' weights are recorded accurately. And therefore, we started off saying that the babies who are eligible to be initiated on kangaroo mother care must be getting missed out. So we got a group of research assistants, who we call the research nurses, to train them using a standardized training manual. So I'm looking at the picture on the left. We undertook a standardized training program over a day to show how the protocol should be adhered to while checking the weight of the newborn baby, how to calibrate the weighing scales, and then how to document it. And then for this, we did a small sub-study before the main study started. What did we do? We got the weights which are routinely recorded in each of those 90 health facilities by the staff nurses who are working there. In parallel, we sent our research nurses from our hospital to the same set of health facilities. And within a eight to 12 hour gap, we tried to record the weights of all those babies at the same time. And the picture on the right side shows you what's the difference that you can see in the birth weights. Less than 2,500, that's the two bars on the left side, 18% of the babies are recorded as low birth weight, according to the staff nurses. And according to the research nurses, it's about 36%. Similarly, for the babies who are less than 2,000 grams, the staff nurses are able to capture them as 2% of the babies who are born low birth weight, less than 2,000 grams whereas the research nurses are able to say that it's about 5.5%. So you can see the level in which the total number of babies who are born in a district and eligible for kangaroo mother care straight away get halved by not even being able to be included in the group. And then we kept, went on to the next phase of implementation, which is basically we said before the 
mothers and babies reach the hospital, what are the set of steps to be done? Once they come to the hospital, that's the KMC facility, and then this kangaroo mother care should be done not only during the hospitalization place, phase, but also as long as possible after they get discharged, because discharge periods are usually from one day to three days. So kangaroo mother care actually benefits for as long as possible, preferably over several weeks. And therefore, a whole set of activities focusing on what should the health workers do, what are all the set of activities that should be done, and how do we measure the outputs. And in parallel, what's the health system strengthening that needs to be done in terms of infrastructure, facilities, all of those in the different health centers and the hospitals. And we also had three different teams, basically a team which does the monitoring and then support for the doctors and nurses as well as the ASHA workers and the a &M workers. And then there's a separate data team which looks at the evaluation to make sure that all the data is getting captured correctly. And the key is to have what is called an implementation model. So we say we call the first set of activities as called model zero. And it's possible, you all know as we do all our implementations or running departments and institutions, we don't get everything correct in the first phase. So we add some steps or tasks, remove some or modify some, and therefore each iteration is given a new name. So we say from model zero, we moved on to model one, model two, and model three, till we think that we've got a whole set of activities which actually make sense for different sets of workers and systems. And then once all of that is done, we then freeze it and then say we run the model three for a period of two years to say how can we improve kangaroo mother care. And at the bottom, I've tried to indicate how long it takes for each of those phases to mature a little bit and then transition to the next phase. And in between at each of these different places, we do minor quality improvement steps. So basically everyone says, I will plan at my level, do something, see what is going on, and then act further based on what needs to be modified. And we define the outcomes. The outcome is skin-to-skin -skin care. Most hospitals will do for about half an hour or one hour. For our project, we defined skin-to-skin -skin care as at least eight hours during a 24-hour period. So it has to be prolonged kangaroo mother care, along with exclusive breast meeting, and at two different time points, at the time of discharge from the hospital, as well as seven days after discharge. And in the project, I show some results to say that we detected 4.7% of the babies over a one-year period, with thanks to all the training. And I'll quickly jump to the results to say that you can see that eight from about 4% of babies in the project area at baseline, that's the left extreme bars, who were initiated on kangaroo mother care before the project started, we managed to get 87% of the babies less than 2,000 grams initiated on kangaroo mother care. So that means soon after birth. And whatever the duration of the hospitalization, 85% of the babies continued at least some kangaroo mother care. That means anywhere between one to eight hours. But our primary endpoint, which was eight hours of skin-to-skin -skin care as well as exclusive breastfeeding, 60% of the babies were benefiting from that at the time of discharge. And then when we sent out workers to work with the ASHA workers and AM workers and found out at the time period of seven days post-discharge, 42 were still continuing kangaroo mother care. So research is basically in this phase you are like in interventional radiology, interventional cardiology, in public health. Once you've learned from epidemiological research, there's a phase for implementation research. And this is typically heavy with implementation. And it addresses questions for which you're trying to struggle, saying, what's the answer to this question? Whether it's TB control or maternal or child problems or in tobacco control or cardiovascular, whatever the domain, you're saying, I learned. I'm able to implement it in real world settings and I can consider the local contextual factors. That's the mother who had a triplets who was able to provide kangaroo care and those babies are at the age of one year and now they are more than five years. Thank you. <laughs>